They say it takes two to make a thing go right. While these serial killer duos have murdered an estimated 700 plus people combined, welcome to five dangerous serial killer duos. Number five, Wolfgang Abel and Marco Furlan, 10 murders. Wolfgang and Marco were a serial killer duo who were active in Italy from 1977 to 1984. They were both males. Wolfgang was an employee of an insurance company and Marco was a university student. The first murder they committed was in August 1977. They burned alive a gypsy drug addict with four Molotov cocktails. At every crime scene they would leave a leaflet. It was written in Italian. The header of the leaflet was the word Ludwig over a Nazi eagle and swastika. The best translation I could find of Ludwig is that it means famous war. Each of the leaflets had a slogan. One of the slogans was, we are the last of the Nazis. Another slogan was, death comes to those who betray the true God. The leaflet said the victims were chosen because they were subhuman. They classed homosexuals, prostitutes and drug addicts as subhuman and the leaflet said they needed to be eliminated. After their first murder, their killings continued for several years. They stabbed a casino worker to death. Shortly after they beat down a homosexual waiter and stabbed him 34 times which killed him. They then axed to death a 51 year old prostitute and crushed the skulls of two priests with a hammer and then burned a sleeping hitchhiker to death. After this they killed a homosexual priest by hammering a nail into his forehead and putting a wooden cross on it. They committed two more murders but they haven't been documented. They were finally caught in 1984 after they tried to set fire to a nightclub. In 1987 they were convicted of 10 counts of murder. They was released on bail and fled the country but was caught again in 1995 and was given 27 years in prison. Marco was released in 2009 and Wolfgang was released in 2013. Number four, Charles Starkweather and Carly Ann Fugate, 11 murders. In 1958, Charles who was 19 and Carly who was 14, went on a two month road trip and killing spree in Nebraska and Wyoming in the United States. They met in 1956 when he was 18 and she was 13. He was a high school dropout and she was still in school. They started dating shortly after they met Charles committed his first murder alone in 1957. He robbed a store then drove the clerk off to a secluded area and shot him in the head with a shotgun. Then on January 21st, 1958, Charles went to Carly's home to visit her. Her mother and stepfather answered the door and told Charles to stay away from their daughter. They began to argue and Charles shot them both dead with his shotgun. He then made his way into the house and killed their two year old daughter by stabbing her to death. He waited for Carly to come home, then she helped him hide the bodies behind the house. They stayed in the house for six days, but when Carly's grandmother went to visit her and got no answer, she became suspicious and called the police. They fled to a farmhouse which was owned by a 70 year old family friend. Charles shot the 70 year old with a shotgun and killed his dog. They then fled the scene and drove off, but crashed a car shortly after, so started to hitchhike. They flagged down a car which had a young teenage couple in it. They forced the couple to drive to an abandoned storm shelter. He shot the male teenager in the back of the head. He then attempted to rape the female but couldn't get it up. He claims that Carly shot her to death out of jealousy. Carly also mutilated the female's genitals. They then took the couple's car and drove it to a wealthy section of Nebraska and broke into the home of Ward and his wife Clara. Ward wasn't home but Clara and their maid was. Charles and Carly stabbed both of them to death and Charles snapped the neck of their dog. They then waited for Ward to get home and Charles shot him. They stole jewelry from the home and took off in Ward's car. The police then put a manhunt out on the couple. They was now in search for a new car as police were searching for the car they was in. They found a man sleeping in his Buick just outside of Wyoming. They went over to the car and Charles went to shoot the man but the gun jammed. Charles said that Carly took the gun off him and shot the man. He said she was the most trigger happy person he ever met. They stole the car and while attempting to drive away the car stalled. A passing motorist stopped to help. Charles threatened him with the gun and an altercation ensued. This is when Carly ran to a nearby sheriff and said, help, there's Starkweather, he's going to kill me. Charles got into the car and tried to evade the police, going at speeds of 100 miles per hour. The police fired a bullet at the car and it passed through the windscreen and the shattered glass cut Charles and he pulled over and surrendered. Charles was found guilty and executed by the electric chair on June 25th, 1959. Carly received a life sentence, but she was released in 1976 for good behavior after serving 17 years. Number three, Fred and Rosemary West, 11 murders. Fred and Rose West were a serial killing couple 
They killed their victims in their home in Gloucester, England. They murdered at least 12 people, including their own family members. Fred met Rose on November 29, 1968. It was Rose's 15th birthday. Fred was 32 at the time. On her 16th birthday, Rose moved in with Fred. 11 months later, Rose gave birth to their daughter, Heather. A month later, on the 4th of December, 1970, Fred went to prison for theft. While he was in prison, Rose killed his daughter from his previous wife. She had told people that the daughter went back to her mother's house in Scotland. Fred and Rose got married on the 29th of January, 1972. They moved into a bigger house. Shortly after this, Fred encouraged Rose to start prostituting, so she turned their bedroom into her own personal brothel. Rose was from a family where incest was common. Her father would go to the house frequently and have sex with her with permission from Fred. They hired a live-in nanny and Fred began to explain to her that he could perform abortions, so if she needed one, she should go to him. Soon after, they offered the nanny into a sex circle, but she refused and quit working for them. Two months after she quit, Fred and Rose saw her while driving down a secluded road and began to apologize to her and asked her to get in the car and come back to theirs and have a cup of tea. So she got in and they went. Once in the house, Fred and Rose began to rape her, but they let her free. After this, Fred raped his eight-year-old daughter and kept doing so for several years until she got pregnant by him. So she got an abortion and left home in 1979. They began to abuse their other children and film it. In 1992, Fred filmed himself raping another daughter. The daughter told her classmates and eventually their kids got taken off them. While in foster care, one of the kids told a social worker that Fred would say, Heather is under the patio. This led to police investigating Fred and Rose, and it turns out Fred murdered his daughter Heather and buried her under the patio of the house. The police searched the house and found human remains. During questioning, Fred admitted that from 1973 to 1979, he killed nine women, including lodgers, a hitchhiker, neighborhood children, and his own daughter. He said Rose was not involved. In 1994, Fred was charged with 11 murders, and Rose was charged with 10. Fred hanged himself in prison in 1995, and Rose is still in prison. Number two, Delfina and Maria Gonzalez, 91 plus murders. Delfina and Maria were serial killer sisters active in Mexico from the 1950s to the 1960s. They ran a large-scale prostitution ring in Guanajuato, Mexico. The police picked up on the women after they had fit a description for a kidnapping case. Police searched the sisters' property and found the bodies of 11 men, 80 women, and several fetuses. After questioning the sisters and the staff at the prostitution ring, the police found out that the sisters would recruit prostitutes and force-feed them cocaine and heroin. And if the prostitutes became sick, injured, lost their looks, or didn't get much male attention, then the sisters would kill them and bury them on the property. They also killed male clientele who carried large sums of money. They were sentenced to 40 years each. Delfina died in prison, and Maria finished her sentence and was released. Number 1. Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole, 5 to 600 murders. We don't know when this duo's killing spree started, but it ended in 1983. They were both drifters who met in a soup kitchen in 1973, and soon after developed a sexual relationship. They then both went to prison in 1983 on arson and weapon charges. While in prison, they started to brag about hundreds of murders they committed. Also while in there, Otis confessed to officers about murders he and Henry had committed. He told them that he accompanied Henry in 108 murders. He then helped the police recover bodies of 246 people. He also implicated him and Henry in 430 murders. Their victims were of all race, age and gender. They had no special style of killing. They'd done everything from stab, shoot, burn, strangulation and bludgeonings. Their youngest victim is believed to be six years old. Although they confessed to all the murders, as there was no hard evidence against them, Otis was only convicted of five murders, and Henry was convicted of 11. They were originally given death penalties, but it was put down to life in prison. Otis died in prison of liver failure in 1996, and Henry died in 2001 of heart failure. Thank you so much for watching. Which killer duo do you think was the most dangerous? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with our latest videos, and why not check out our other videos? Goodbye.